So. Great, Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you uh, for being here. Um, not only do I wear a hat in terms of uh, being able to serve on this committee, I also am the uh, ranking member on the Appropriations Committee uh, for Homeland Security, which uh, appropriates dollars for CISA. So I know they play a big role here. And we talk, I think in the report, there is a lot of talk about collaboration and coordination between TSA, and you've already mentioned CISA uh, in, your, in your responses. Um, are we finding, did we find, uh, I guess this would be uh, from Ms. Gordon, in, 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 in the examination, have we found that these coordinations are occurring and collaborations are occurring? Are we falling short here? Is, uh, is there a better way that we can manage that, I think, particularly uh, important aspect of uh, trying to prevent cyber attacks? Uh, thank you, Senator. In our work that dates back to 2019, we had a number of recommendations to uh, affirm and encourage FIMSA and TSA to collaborate and coordinate better. To date, they've addressed four of the five recommendations that we had. The one that remains outstanding is about the incident recovery protocol plan, and uh, more information is needed to fully develop and update, actually update that plan so that it accounts for security risks, threats, uh, changes in federal law and policy. And TSA has reported back to us that it's working on that and collaborating with FIMSA to do so. Great, thank you. Um, Mr. Administrator, it's good to see you again. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, none of uh, Colonial Pipeline's operational technology was impacted by dark side hack. However, um, there is still a concern that the hackers have obtained information that could have that can still remain uh, a, a um, possible impact to Colonial's operation. Does possession of such information pose a threat to their current operations as you know it, or has Colonial worked with TSA to resolve any of these risks? And, and give me the status update on that type of um, uh, uh, of the information uh, that they may still have or may still be out there. Thank you, Senator. Good to see you as well. And um, we work very closely with Colonial as does CISA and the FBI and the Department of Energy. Um, th they brought on um, private sector third party companies to help them recover from the ransomware attack. And so I know they're working with those companies to assess the extent uh, of the impact, the long term extent of the impact on their business. So that's an ongoing investigation? It is. Yes, it is. Uh, I think a lot of the um, cyber attacks that you hear both government and private sector occur very, I, I don't want to say innocently, but the ability to get into the systems occurs by a human error. Somebody opens an email. Uh, somebody inadvertently, you know, uh, makes it easier to breach the, breach the systems. What's the key to, I guess training is the key to keep uh, on a preventive measure to make sure that everybody realizes the ramification of, uh, of, of doing that. Um, how, do you have any other perspectives? Uh, this would be for the whole panel. Any other perspectives on how to cut down on that, on that human error? Of a simple mistake can cause a major breach. I don't know who wants to start. Uh, Mr. Administrator, why don't you start? Yeah. Thank you, Senator. Um, a couple things. One is you're, you're right. Training is, is a key part of it. Um, the other is I just think greater cybersecurity awareness on the part of leadership um, applies in the government, it applies in the private sector as well. Long gone are the days when you're a senior official in the private sector or in government where you can say, hey, I don't understand that stuff because it, it, it impacts your ability to operate as an agency and your ability to operate as a private sector company. Um, some of the requirements in the second security directive, which I can't discuss in detail because they are sensitive security information, do provide the information that will allow us to see and the companies to see whether or not they might have some breaches in their IT infrastructure that they ought to take a look at. Okay, Ms. Rottenberg, I think maybe also, I think it'd be interested to hear what, what the Department of Transportation is doing uh, to as preventative measures for things I was talking about. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Senator. And just to echo the administrator's comments, I think we see certainly across the, the transportation sector, a lot of the cyber risk is for sort of very basic cyber hygiene issues. There, there's obviously some very sophisticated attacks happening at high levels, but a lot of it is, is fairly basic. And I think 
TSA security directives are hopefully going to really buy down that risk. Um, you know, as I stated earlier, we are just seeing in the transportation sector, obviously, as systems grow more sophisticated, the pipeline system, the vehicle systems, uh, that, that there are more points of vulnerability. And, right. and I think, as the administrator said, it's, it's no longer just sort of the IT department that has to worry about this. The whole leadership of the organizations needs to be involved in cybersecurity. Right. I mean, if, you, if you're looking at uh, uh, vehicles, uh, you know, with all the different sensors going just over a bridge or something, the the, uh, the ability to disrupt is going to be, I think, I agree, more and more. Um, Ms. Gordon, did you have anything you wanted to add there? Um, the, the Department of Transportation and the Department of Homeland Security serve as the ses sector risk management agency, the lead agency around security for the transportation sector. They have a role to educate, to provide information, to share information about threats to their private sector populations and, and uh, the private sector owner operators. And that's a vehicle they can use to raise awareness and educate. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Capito.